Welcome to Make Magazine's video podcast. In this episode, we visit Squid Labs in Emeryville, California. Saul Griffith gives us a tour. Um, so right now we're laser cutting uh, some little physical models of a 3D uh, analog to protein folding. So can you make machines that fold in the same way that proteins fold? Um, so I'm literally cutting thousands of parts. Uh, the the parts need to be super high resolution because I'm actually going to press fit magnets into these and so I need sort of about 10 micron accuracy. Um, so you really could only make these things using a machine like a laser cutter um, unless you actually wanted to ex spend like thousands and thousands of dollars and have them made in an injection mold. So for certain things like this, the only way, this machine is the only way you can do it. So things like this, very good for very quickly prototyping stuff. Um, this is actually Delrin that we're cutting right now, uh, which is an acetyl polymer, which is pretty good because it's both mechanically strong uh, and also laser cuttable. So this is a 12 ton press, infrequently used but useful for squeezing things. So we use this if we need to make plates of composite materials or press fit bearings into uh, shafts or, or whatever it happens to be. So it's, it's kind of just, it's really just a car jack attached to a frame. Um, drill press. Table saw, video projector, new video projection screen that we made last night. Um, actually, I just documented that on Instructables. It's kind of fun. Uh, it's literally just a sheet of Tyvek, very high quality for $15 and a half an hour's work. Um, drop saw, which is cool. We have one of every bicycle tool in the universe because nearly everyone here rides, modifies, or hacks bicycles in some form or another. Um, this is the Lego chopper. Uh, this was sort of a conceptual piece. Can you make um, a bicycle that's completely reconfigurable? So this is made out of 80-20, which is an industrial extrusion, usually employed to make uh, prototype machinery or uh, production line machines. Um, so you can cut that in any length you want, and then we just water jet cut these aluminum plates, and you can literally bolt this together. Now it's a chopper, and now it's a tandem, now it's a tricycle, now it's a unicycle. Uh, one guy built a telescoping unicycle, so as he improved, he could increase the height, <laughs> which was pretty cool. Um, this is my new wall of tools, which I'm enormously proud of. Everything in the universe should have wheels. Um, <laughs> so this basically can go where the projects go. Uh, saves a lot of time. Uh, rope and chin-up bars. This is an NC mill. Uh, this is for doing 3D milling of um, sort of molds and uh, components. Uh, that's a pretty old machine. Um, we sort of still in the process of tuning it and making sure everything is, is running right. Next to that we have a plasma cutter. So this is a computer controlled uh, arc cutter. Um, basically does steel. You can see a lot of the scraps here. It'll do up to about a, a half inch or a quarter inch pretty easily of steel or aluminum. And it just arcs through that and burns your hole and then does it on a computer control. So this is a nice four foot by four foot bed. It's a pretty convenient machine. It's actually a kit machine. You can replace the tool on the head so you can put a router here or a laser if, or uh, whatever you want to do all sorts of other uh, cutting operations. Um, that's the, the plasma next to it. You know, more tools. Lots of, pretty much one of every hand tool. Um, you keep a lot of plastics for prototyping all sorts of random things there. That's about to move closer to the laser cutter. Um, ovens, we use this for uh, reflowing solder. If you keep your eye on reuse and Craigslist type things, you can get ovens like this for free out of old labs. Just make sure that they weren't used for killing viruses as an autoclave first. Um, you never know what you'll get. Um, <laughs> these two weren't, uh, so they're pretty useful. Um, more bicycle tools. We kind of keep one of every screw, bolt, nut, washer in the universe in all of these boxes here. Um, and you would think there'd be rhyme and reason to the organization, but you'd find your own time is too valuable to ever actually store or sort <laughs> these things. So they're somewhat pseudo-random. So if you're looking for anything, it takes like a random search across about eight buckets before you find it, but it still seems to work. Um, there's yeah, the normal stuff, uh, more top secret stuff, uh, one of Dan's LED projects, company car obviously, uh, down there, <laughs> still awaiting its electric conversion, 
um, may never happen because it just sounds good with, with an internal combustion engine. Um, we've got some engine We do a lot of windsurfing and kite surfing. So these are all a lot of kite prototypes and windsurfing boards and kite board prototypes and things. Uh, conveniently, we are 10 minutes from the bay, so we can leave work at 4 and be surfing at 4.10. Uh, 4.15 if you can put it on your website. Uh, what else do you want to see? Uh, surfboards for company surf days. Um, this is the origin of the species. If you remove all line breaks and uh, pagination, so it, as a single page, because we actually consider ourselves intelligent designers here, and we're trying to reclaim the term from those people who are trying to co-opt it. Um, in here, whoop, if we go back, this is our optics lab. Uh, this is where we're developing the um, machines for making eyeglass lenses at low cost. Uh, it's sort of torn down right now because we were doing calibration and 3D scanning of the surfaces last week. Um, then, oh, cool blinky bicycle that everyone likes to look at. Um, so this bicycle was also sort of a conceptual piece. Um, it's like a Japanese bridge in that there's no glue and there's no bolts. It's uh, literally held together just by very close fit tolerance, um, high tolerance press fit, so it's kind of like Lego. And all of the parts are made out of 3 8 inch polycarbonate, cut dead flat, so literally you can ship this thing in a flat box and then punch it together and away you go. And the lights were an after addition by Dan just to give us all epileptic fits, I guess. <laughs> Um, that's pretty much it. Yes, after, after the appropriate time. Um, so this is the finished product. Um, I'll pull this out carefully so you can see all the parts there. Um, maybe if we take it outside we can pop them out and you can see what the result is like. Um, so literally you can now just push those out and the little holes that you can see there will actually be where we press fit the magnets that will uh, make this assemble. So, lots and lots and lots. Now we just need some interns to uh, assemble them all. <laughs>